Hello everyone. So, we are back with the ESAT made easy program in which we are explaining all those I mean solving all those previous year questions of CSAT including reasoning and max and today's topic of discussion is percentage. Percentage is a what to say a basic concept and a simple concept which everyone knows right because from the school days itself we are he uh, hearing the name percentage and its concept because everyone is asking how much percentage marks you got right. That is an a uh, usual question which we face every day in our daily life e till you get a job. So, uh, this percentage is the uh, today's topic and we know its significance because about 12 questions have been asked that means again as in the case of our previous uh, lecture of uh, a ratio and proportion this is also an important topic you can make sure one question from percentage in every question paper or, or an average of two questions per paper uh, according to your luck. But if you are uh, thorough with the concept this concept will be uh, helpful uh, for your data interpretation questions also because most of the data interpretation questions they may ask the concept of uh, they, they may ask you to solve the question by using the concept of percentage. So, today's topic we are selecting percentage. So, let us start as uh, usual we will start with the basic concept of percentage what do you mean by percentage it is we know per cent that means cent means century or that is 100. So, per 100 whatever ratio is there whatever value is there its percentage means that is per 100. So, we are here that exp uh, the example conveys that meaning also the 30 percentage means 30 per 100 that is 30 by 100 or 0 0.30. Uh, so, this is the similar case for example, 36 percentage means what 36 per 100 that is 36 by 100 that is 0.36. This is the basic idea of percentage. So, if you are asking what how can you can you uh, what is a represent this 0.36 into as 36 percentage? Yes, obviously yes, right. That is their, uh, the, the second example conveys 0.23 can be expressed as 23 percentage. So, we can express in both ways using the concept of percentage. And by using the per, uh, case of percentage, directly we are not using percentage, we are using the concept of proportion plus percentage to find most of the questions and to solve most of the questions. For example, if you are telling that you got 30 marks out of 50, hmm, how much percentage is this? What is the percentage of marks in that subject? What will you do? You will multiply it into 100. How? The concept is that if you are getting 30 out of 50, hmm, how much will you get out of 100? That is the concept, right? This is what you have to find out. So, this is similar thing as we had explained in the case of proportion, right? These are proportional. 30 by 50 should be proportional to x by 100. So, what should be x? It will be 60 into 2 into 2. All right. So, this idea, this is how we will do 30 by 50 into 100. This is how we will just multiply into 100 and we will we'll get the percentage. That is the basic idea of finding the value of percentage or finding the percentage of a given number. So, uh, in case of percentage, the first thing you need to know is that you need to find some percentage of some value. For example, 24 percentage of 300. 24 th percentage of 300 means what? 24 by 100, isn't it? This is per 100 into 300. That is 72. This is the first idea, first method of calculation. Otherwise, they may ask to find what percentage of 80 is 20. What percentage of 80 is 20? 20 is what percentage of 80? Right. 20 is what percentage of 80? That means by 6 by 100. That is what? 4 equal to 25 percentage. 20 is 25 percentage of 80. So, these are the two basic ideas which you need to understand. That means this question can be twisted in either ways, but 
the thing is the same, the calculation is the same. That is the first and foremost thing you have to make sure to in the case of percentage. So, with that we will move on to the question and the remaining concepts we will discuss during the questions. So, here the first question in 2016 CSATs, much simple question. Two numbers x and y are respectively 20 percent and 28 percent less than a third number z. By what percentage is the number y less than the number of x? In this question, in the case of in the previous lecture of ratio and proportions, I had already told you no value is given. You have to take value x or you have to you can take and you can assume a value and find out the result, is not it? Why? Because if you are assuming a value, what they have to what do you have to find out? You are given some percentages and you need to find out some percentages. Percentage is also some sort of ratio, right. So, as the concept is saying, no specific value is given here, you just need to find out the, uh, you can assume a value and find out the actual answer. So, here I am assuming that let uh, the third number is that equal to 100. If is that equal to 100? x is 20 percent less than that z, is not it? 20 percent less means if one number is 100, it is 20 percent less. 20 percent of 100 is what 20 itself, right. So, x is this much less 100 minus 20 percent of 100 that is 80. That means 100 minus 20, 80, right. Similarly, y is what 100 minus 28 percentage of 100. So, we will get y as 72, right. This much less means less of what than the z. So, what is there given, what is there given in the case of than? That will that is the value which we multiply with the percentage, is not it? So, this much value of 100. So, this much whatever percentage of 100 is given that is lesser than z in the case of x. In the case of y, whatever value is given in the case of with respect to 100 that much is less than z in the case of y. So, this is the basic idea x is if you are assuming that as 100 x will be 80, y will be 72. If you are assuming the value of z as 200, you will get x as 160, y as 144, simple, right. If you just assume the value only because no specific values is given here in the question. I had been explaining the concept, I explained this concept, the application of assuming a value in the case of ratio also, here also, in every problem, this will make your calculation easier you will get the answer quickly, but you have to make sure that no specific value is given in the question. So, if x is uh, 80 and y is 72, what is the question asked? By what percentage is the one number y less than the number x? y is less than x by what? 8, right. 8 is the difference between this. y is less than x. Than the number x, what, what percentage than the number x? Than what? x. Right. So, you will get this much into percentage. This is how we will put it into percentage, right. As if we did 30 by 50 is 60 percentage means into 100. Likewise here 80 by 80 is, uh, 80 by 80 is percentage is what we need to find out, right. So, into 100. So, what will you get? 10 percentage. 10 percentage is the final answer, right. So, what you have to make sure with the problem is that if something is less than uh, some other value, something is greater than some other value, assume that if x was 20 percent greater than z, 20 percent greater than z, what will become x? If z is 100, x will become 120, right. So, that concept you have to make sure, you have to understand thoroughly, then only you will, you will be able to move on in this topic of percentage. If something is 100, we are assuming something as 100, 20 percent more means 20 more. We will take one more example, if 200 is given, 
200 is given. You have to take 35 percent more. So A is to 200, B is 35 percent mo more than A. So what will be B? B equal to 200 plus 200 into 35 percent age, right? I am taking out 200, what will become 1 plus 35 by 100, right? This will become 200 into 135 by 100, right? So something is more means we will multiply it as 100 plus that much percentage. If something is less means we will uh, subtract as 100 minus that much percentage. So you can write 200 into 135 by 100, you will get the answer. 270, right. So, this is the basic idea of percentages. So, we will move on to the next question. In a group of persons, 70 percentage of the persons are male and 30 percentage are married. If two seventh of the males are married, what fraction of the females is single, okay. So, here also no specific value is given. I am assuming total number of persons are as 100, okay. 70 percent are male. 70 percentage means what? 70 are male, right. If I was taking 200, it will be 140. How? 70 percentage of 100 means 70 itself. If it was 200, it will become 140. If it was 300, it will become 210. Like whatever value you assume, accordingly the value here will change. So, Male is 70. So, obviously 100 is there, the rest are female, right. And 30 percentage of the persons are married and in the case of married, 30 percent that means 30 are married and so the rest 70 are unmarried. This much is sure from the, this much is understood from the first sentence, right. Then the actual concept lies in the second one. 2 seventh of the males are married, 2 seventh means 2 by 7, 1 fourth means 1 by 4, right. So, 2 seventh of the males, which is males, 70, these are married, so this is 20, 20 males are married, total how many are married, 30 are married, so how many females will be married? So, 30 minus 20, 10 females will be married. What they are asking? Fraction of females is single. So, if 10 are married of 30, how many will be there as single or unmarried? 30 minus 10, 20. 20 will be unmarried, right. So, the fraction of single to the fraction of females they are asking. We got the concept as? 20 females are unmarried by 30 are the total females. So, the ratio is 2 is to 3. Understood? Here we got 20 females are those 2 seventh of 70 means 2 seventh of the males means 20. Remaining is 10. So, if 10 females are married, the remaining 20 will be unmarried. That is, these are the single women with respect to total number of females, total females. So, the ratio becomes 2 is to 3, 2 by 3 is the answer. So, I hope this is a simple question, basic question and everyone will be able to solve it very easily, right. Next one, candidates in a competitive examination consists of 60 percent when here also in this question also the same concept, no such values are given. So, the UPSC pattern is that we have to just understand the question, we have to interpret the question. They are not asking us to solve it in a much calculative manner. We have to understand the basic concepts, that is what they mean. So, the, so here also we are assuming that 100 is the number of candidates, consists of 60 percent men, 60 are men and so obviously, uh, 40 are women, right. 50, 60 are men and 40 are women. 70 percent of the men qualified at the test. 70 
परसेंट ऑफ मेन क्वालिफाइड द टेस्ट क्वालिफाइड राइट हाउ मेनी ऑफ वीमेन सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंटेज ऑफ वीमेन क्वालिफाइड द टेस्ट दैट मीन्स थ्री फोर थर्टी क्वालिफाइड राइट देन and the and entered the final test so these 42 plus 30 72 people entered the final test because they passed the prelims now mains is there were 80 percent men and 70 percent women were successful so here also 80 percent neck in the next stage 80 percent of men and 70 percentage of women were successful right So here it becomes twenty-one who are successful. Here what four by five or eight by ten? Eight by ten into forty-two means um, thirty-three point six. So this much is the successful men, and this much is the successful women. now we need to infer the answer success rate is higher for women no it is higher for men right 33.6 is there here only 21 is there overall success rate is below 50 overall success rate is below 50 we need to find out we'll see the next one more men cleared the examination than women this one is true isn't it more men cleared the exam than women so if you are watching or if you are reading all those options the c is the immediate option which you can lock it without any doubt so don't no need to find out the cases of a and b there so this is the answer more men had cleared the examination than women so option c is the answer so we will move on to the next one a gardener increased the size of his rectangular field right so in the case of rectangular field i'm taking a rectangular field or a rectangular garden its initial case was x length y breadth here also i can assume the value here also i can assume the value so to make the calculation easier i have to multiply right so if i am it is getting as xy the xy will stay no need to multiply any value that is why i am not putting the values to make the calculation simpler so if x is the length y is the breadth area will be x y then what happens is uh, length was increased by 40 percentage so i had already told whenever something is increased 100 plus 40 percentage will be of that of the actual value right so it will become 1.4 x new field right and in the case of y what happens decrease its width right so decrease means 100 minus 20 percentage of y that is 0.8 y this is the width right so this was the initial dimensions and this is the final dimension so what is the area here area is given by 1.4x into 0.8y this will become 80 32 1.12xy right this is 1.12xy final case this was the initial case what is the difference 1.12xy minus xy this will become 0.12xy by initial case xy Into hundred, this is the increased value. That is, twelve percentage is the increased value in the case of area of the new garden. So this is the question, and I hope this is a pretty easier one, right? There is no how much calculation is there. We can just assume any value, just multiply, just assume any, and find out the next value, multiply, see the difference by. Initial area, you will get the percentage. 
there is no much confusion in the question but coming questions will prove some. A tank full of petrol in Arun's motorcycle lasts for 10 days. A tank full of petrol in Arun's motorcycle lasts for 10 days. Assume Arun needs 1 liter, Arun needs 1 liter per day or x liter per day whatever. I am taking 1 liter per day. If 1 liter per day is the consumption of Arun, how many days he is using that? 10 days. So, capacity of tank is what 1 liter per day for 10 days that is how 10 liters this is the case capacity of what full tank tank full petrol right so this is the capacity of the tank 10 liter right now i am assuming he starts using 25 percentage more every day 25 percent more means initially it was 1 liter per day so now it is 25 percent more 100 plus 25 that is percentage of 1 that is what 125 percentage of 1 that is what 1.25. So, the consumption now becomes 1.25 liters per day. So, now we need to find out if the same uh, bike is having same tank full of petrol with the consumption 1.25 liter per day how many days it will last right. So, uh, this much is the consumption for we do not know how many number of days, let it be x days. What is the capacity? 10 liter. Capacity remains the same, right. Capacity is of the uh, motorcycle is not changing. So, this is the capacity, this is the consumption. So, how many days? 10 by 25 that is 8 days. This is the basic idea, very simple question, you just need to understand the concept that we need to equate it with the concept of capacity. If so, it will be very easy. You just need to think it as a real life problem. In the first case, we found out the capacity. If it, if you are putting the case of, if it instead of 1, if you are putting x, what will become? Capacity will be 10x. This will become 10, uh, let it be not x, we are taking x, a, this will be 10a, a into 10. Here 125 percentage of A, this will be of A. So, here it will be 1.25 A, x equal to 10 A, this 10 A will be cancelled. Then also you will get the same result. This is why, this is why we are assuming a value because in the case of these equating concepts, the values are getting cancelled and so we can either use the concept of a variable or if you are sure that it will be get cancelled, you can directly put a value because if you are putting a value here, you are putting the same concept in the LHS or RHS also. So, there is no effect of putting a variable or a value. So, this is about the question. So, the next one. In a test, a candidate attempted only 8 questions and secured 50 marks in each of the questions. So, in this question, 8 questions he had answered. So, I am assuming 10 marks per question. 10 marks per question means for 8 questions, how many? 80 marks. Right. But he got only 50 percentage of the marks in each of the questions. 50 percentage of the mark means what? Half half of the value, right. So, he got only 40 marks, 40 marks was the result. If he obtained a total of 40 percentage in the test, so what is the mark obtained? 40 mark. This is what 40 percentage of the total, this is the 40 percentage of the total, right. So, what we can do? We will equate the values 40 equal to 40 by 100 into x or total, right. So, this will be get cancelled and the total value becomes 100, total becomes 100, here it was 40, it was 40 percentage, it got cancelled, we will get a total of 100. 
So total is 100. We know every question is having equal marks, right? So 10 marks per question. So how many questions will be there? 100 by 10. 10 questions were there. So option B is the answer. So understood. In this question, we are assuming the value as 80 questions. We are assuming with 10 marks each or in the same value if you can put if you need to put x marks per question 8x will be the marks 8x will be the maximum marks obtained for 8 questions but what happens only he will get 50 percentage so 4x will be the marks obtained equal to 40 percentage of the total then also you will get the value as 10x and by dividing 10x by x you will get the value 10 concept is same right basic idea of um, an exam in which uh, all questions only the concept is that all questions are having equal marks okay so that with that we are winding up the first part of this session of percentage in the next part we will see the remaining questions i hope you are very clear about the concepts the thing is that you just don't consider each question as each separate thing just understand the fact that the thing is you know the concept what is percentage you know the question what is asked how you can apply just think about that there is no other equation no other shortcuts nothing is necessary for solving these UPSC questions you just think uh, you just need that common sense to apply the concept apply the basic concepts to that relevant question with that we will wind up this part and we will see the next part in the next video okay thank you